So in the previous video we walked through the help uh, sample file called transforms translate and rotate. I want to talk now about one that's a little bit more complicated called translate and rotate sequence. And this is going to get into a few issues around things like not only how sort of transforms work and how the difference is between when you're working in geometric space or model line space, but also the idea of making multiple uh, iterations of something and uh, how to handle lists. So if I open up translate sequence, we're going to see that we have a more complicated definition right now. I'm going to walk through what it's doing. I'm going to full screen this again because we don't need to see the this little corner of our Revit canvas just yet. So what I've got is I'm running an auto, so this is all executing right now. And we can see I've still got my Watch 3D window open, and we've got a nice spray of lines now rather than a single line that is rotated. We have a bunch of rotations. I'm going to show you how that works. So if you remember what we looked through before with our translate example, again, we're coming from this file here, translate and rotate, and now we're looking at translate and rotate sequence. I've still got very much, uh, I've still got some very similar nodes as I was working on before. I've got my transform rotation, I've got my scale, I've got my XYZ basis, my XYZ zero, this is where my line starts. I've got my transform point, which is saying how I want it to move around in space, sort of forwards and backwards. I've got my scale node, which is saying how much is it moving, and my rotation, which is saying how much is it rotating. And what I've added to this is a number sequence node. Number sequence, if I just put on a little watch node onto this, we can see what's spilling out of this bad boy. So we've got Dynamo Scheme Value Watch List. So. If I unfold that, I can see that what is coming out of here is a series of numbers, one, three, that are incrementing through. So I've got a start value, which is I want my number sequence to start at point 0.1, which we can see here coming out at point 0.1. And I want it to end at 6.24, which is also known as 2 pi. So that's to say that my range of my slider is going to go from almost no rotation to a full 360 degree rotation, also known as 2 pi in radians. And the step that it is doing, that is how far is it incrementing each time I change it, is going to be 0.25 radians. So we can see that that's stepping through 0 0.1 to 0 0.35 and so on and so on um, until it reaches the end at 6.24. So now I've got a sequence of numbers that are spilling out. That is to say that I'm going to take my single line that I was rotating and making longer, and I'm going to move it through a sequence of rotations and extensions for each one of these guys. So now that I have a sequence of numbers coming out, now is where we get into something that's a little bit more complicated, and we are working on making this more simplified, but just so that you can work on this stuff right now, I'm going to explain it. So if you look at what I've got going on here, I have a series of these map nodes. Map, map, map. What map is allowing us to do is to say, a map node says, I want to make something and I want to make it using a sequence of numbers. It would be nice, I agree, if you're already thinking this, that for my line, it would be nice if I could just pipe in a sequence of endpoints directly into it. But for right now, at least, my line is going to need to say, I'm going to make a line, and I want to make that line operation apply itself to a sequence of numbers. So here I've got a line that has a start point, that is all of my lines have a start point. And they're being combined with a sequence of numbers which are coming down the pipeline. And just to give you another example of how that mapping action works. I can take, I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to plug in my watch node so you can see what's spilling out of this guy. You can see sort of visually what's coming out over here in the watch 3D node, but let's also just take a look. So out of the map node, I've got a sequence of lines now coming out. 
it says Autodesk R Rivet DB line. So each one of these is symbolizing uh, the line that we see here. So I can just sort of inspect that and see that, yes, indeed, I've got a whole list of values coming out of here. Well, say I want to turn that into model lines like we did before in the earlier version where we were just making one line. I can do the same thing. I can say uh, model curve like that. And remember how we were wiring up the curve in the sketch plane. So I'm going to go sketch plane, new sketch plane like that. So I'm going to wire up my sketch plane to my sketch plane. Yeah, there. Now, the problem here is that this node doesn't take lists. Again, we're working on it. Uh, but in the meantime, while you're playing around with this stuff and giving us feedback, hopefully, if I took my list and I piped it straight into this guy, it would barf on it. Um, unable to cast a list to type container. So this node is not set up to take a list of information. So this is where I'm going to use my map. So I take my map, and my map is going to say it has an argument, an f of x, it says what do you want to do? Well, what I want to do is I want to make a model curve, and I want to make that model curve with a sequence of other information. Well now, my sequence is this series of lines. So I have my sequence of lines that are piping in here, and I've got my model curve, which I want to make. I'm going to fill in that curve that it's going to be taking from here. So this is where it gets a little funny, where you get uh, information sort of not going straight down the graph. So if I take my model curve, I plug it in there. Uh, why are you erroring? You're not erroring, really. You might have to run it again. So, well, here, let me just plug it back in again. Model curve, map, and I need to wire in the sketch plane, and there we go. So now we've got my sequence of geometric lines being piped down into my map, which is then receiving its information from a model curve. And we have our nice set of model lines that are being generated out here in the Revit canvas, just like they are here in our sort of abstracted watch 3D of what's happening in geometric space. So if I go back over in here and I look at my controllers, so I've got my number sequence, which is going from the start of 0.01 to a full 360 degree rotation or 6.24 radians. If I alter that so that it is not doing the same number of iterations, or same amount of rotation, I can get changes to my model in Revit. So that's an explanation of what's going on with maps and how you can turn single operations into multiple operations. And in the next video, I'm going to show you another way to get this behavior, but using a uh, more uh, traditional computational method known as recursion to do that. And again, doing it without any coding, but just with the nodal relationships.